Uh, You can go to any bank or anybody on Wall Street and ask them if they trust their counterparty. They do not. That's the entire point and how finance is built. So that's actually why the very use case of a blockchain, and in many cases, a public permission blockchain is what the best solution is. That's where you get the best of both worlds. You get to take advantage of the fact that you know the data you're using is verified, that it's not been changed, that is it correct. And you get to use the technology of smart contracts for instant settlement, for collateralization, for data transparency, et cetera. But just like you said, you can control who the actors are. One of the biggest benefits that people love about tokenization, security tokens, RWAs, if you will, is the fact that you actually can lose your asset. A lot of people always ask me, well, hey, I can lose my Bitcoin. Why the heck would I want to be able to lose my stocks, right? It is. Like, of course, why would you? But no, this is a regulated environment. In order for you to be able to technically, legally be buying tokenized investments that represent stocks and other things, that means they have to follow the rules and the regulations, which means they're doing the KYC, the know your customer checks, the same checks that you would do when you sign up for a brokerage firm so that they know, hey, we know who you are. And actually, because it's on the blockchain, we can see what happened. And if you somehow lost your keys or if somehow someone hacked you and ran away, first of all, they know who they are because there, there would have to be, you know, maybe they stole somebody else's identity and they took your, your stock and they're running away with it. The beautiful thing is, doesn't matter. They can freeze that. They can burn that. They can basically stamp those stocks as stolen, useless. And they can then mint you new tokens to a new wallet or where however the, however you want it to be safeguarded. Because at the end of the day, the token is not a bearer instrument. Make that very clear for anybody who may be confused about this. The token doesn't just represent your ownership in it. It is tied to your identity. It is tied to your legal investment, uh, which is usually either in the form of a terms and conditions signature or an actual signature on like an investment subscription document that proves that you own that. So this is just a digital receipt. This isn't something that, hey, if I manage to steal your wallet and I see all these stock tokens in it, that they're suddenly my tokenized stocks. No, they'll always be yours and they can be easily sent back to it. You cannot lose your investments. Okay, great. Yeah, so, so this is very helpful. Um, I'm trying. Let me just throw this out at you, and then you tell me. I'm going to come up with an analogy. These things are never quite analogous, and then you maybe give me feedback on it because I, I am trying to put my own finger, like for myself, and then also like to communicate it once I'm square in right. my head on this of the difference. So, l- let's say we're talking about sheep, okay? And then there's like six different ranches or something around and, or this is a cattle. And one model would be you go up to the, you know, the ranch number one and then they just internally, they have like a, a notebook and they keep track and they say, oh yeah, Joe Smith, he has 13 sheep with us that are his. Yeah. And the idea is if they lose that piece of paper or if they're corrupt or they just make a mistake and they say, no, you've only got eight according to our records, you're out of luck. You say, no, I had 13. They said, no, you don't. We said, you know, you're done. But then a, a separate model might be like, okay, they have like the, the fencing in the middle of the town square and representatives from each of the six big ranches are there. And any sheep coming and going, you know, from, from that barbed wire, all six of them have to be there and sign off on it. And so that, so still like if all six of them got together and colluded, but they're all kind of in competition with each other too. And it's just more public, but yet strictly speaking, do you get what I'm trying to go? I'm trying to like isolate like with the permission. I think it's a great yeah. analogy. That's actually really, you know, uh, I actually really like it. The The reality is, is that Notepad right now is a PDF or an Excel sheet. And that's what everybody's relying on for accurate information, for doing trades. There are loan books of just Excel sheets of saying, hey, there's a, a hundred, a thousand, 10,000 loans in here. And here is the relevant information about each loan. And that's an Excel sheet that's sent over. That's our notepad in the ranch. And right now, blockchain is creating the town square post so that people can go and register their trades and make sure that everything is accurate and and no one's trying to create any tomfoolery or just any disaster avoidance. Uh, So I think it's a great uh, analogy. That is not, we don't have that today 
for public markets or private markets. And tokenization enables both Mm -hmm. to basically come online, to become digital, to become tradable in a legal manner. That's the most important thing. And that's here today. I think we're going to see a lot of that in 2024. Okay, great. By the way, I also appreciate your use of the word tomfoolery. That's uh, the only one that I like even more than that is skullduggery, which you may, love. You may <laughs> want to cool one. That's a good one. add that to your bag of tricks. Okay. All right. Well, then, okay, good. So I'll keep playing with that because again, I'm trying to, like I say, once I understood where the Bitcoin maxes were coming from, I was like, okay, but still, maybe I, I don't want to catch off guard here, but because they were bringing up, and I think it's related to what we're talking about, that, oh, well, because the beauty of the reason the Bitcoin protocol can get away with evades all these problems they're bringing up for every other possible use that someone might come up with is that its own internal, it doesn't refer to anything. Like to say I have three Bitcoins that I can, I have the private keys to and I control, that doesn't, it's not pointing to anything. It, all that means in the grand scheme of things is that I have the ability to transfer those to other addresses. And then, you know, and so if the rest of the world doesn't care about that, if they think Bitcoin's stupid, then I, that's useless. But if you know we're in the current environment where they have a, you know a lot of people are willing to trade a lot of U.S. dollars for a you know control of a Bitcoin, you know then it does make it matter. And whereas they're saying a lot of these other the smart contracts and I own real estate in Dubai and this digital token points to that, they're still saying there's still got to be something in the real world responding to that. Like there's elements where they might say it's an oracle problem. Like you know we we were thinking of a lot of life insurance applications here at Infinio, and ultimately you know, how does the blockchain know if somebody died? Like somehow there's got to be a way to get, you know, and you can program smart contracts, but so there is some element where there's various choke points. But to me, it's like, well, okay, but in theory, there's hard forks and stuff in Bitcoin that are possible too. You know what I mean? So none of this is truly as pristine and, you know, impervious to human intervention as they claim. And to me, it seems like it's more of a spectrum and that, and you can still imagine, I can imagine a lot like, okay, I think there's a lot of consensus as to about whether a person's dead or not. Now, now, granted, if he just disappears, maybe we don't know and there should be, you know, some, but if there's a corpse sitting there and he's got the DNA match, it's like, I, I think yeah. we could be pretty safe in saying that guy's dead. So anyway, I just, I'm wondering if your reaction on that point about the Oracle problem and that blockchains only work if there's not an Oracle issue and da, 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 da. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, tokenization just makes it better. If you look at the the death certificate example, it's like you actually right now in the crypto world, you have actual estates all around the world dealing with a real problem of like, we can't get access to crypto holdings or we don't know how to manage them. Mm -hmm. It's brand new territory. But when it comes to our world, what we are talking about is a world that has decades, over a century, basically, of rules around and regulations around how we treat those things. And the technology is just a better way to manage it, a better way to efficiently use it. I think that the way that I always like to say is like you break it up into two angles of, okay, well, one end, you're at, you have a better data solution. That's just what it is. Now it's more transparent. People can accurately use it. On the other end, you have the smart contracts and you can actually do all kinds of other cool features with it that actually were never even introduced before. So those are two different things. Uh-huh. But at the end of the day, both of them don't exist for a lot of these, a lot of the, the world's trillions, hundreds and trillions of dollars of private companies, of bonds, of debt products, of loans, of real estate, and the list goes on. Uh, and so to have something that is at least a better solution, even if it's not perfect, like that to me, you know, that to me trumps the argument of, yeah, let's stick to what we have today. Even on the case of Bitcoin, to the Bitcoin Maxi specifically to address them, it's like I like to look at, you know, one Samson Mao as a big proponent of, again, the liquid chain where you can actually use the Bitcoin ledger to essentially issue tokens using their liquid technology. We saw the same technology be used by El Salvador's president for volcano bonds. They plan to tokenize government bonds that are backed by Bitcoin mining. And that Bitcoin mining is powered by geothermal energy from the volcano, volcano bonds. So this is like, this is all Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And the president of El Salvador realized, like, I can't, I can't issue a government bond on Bitcoin without this technology. 
and to do it this way, in a tokenized way, in a regulated manner, because otherwise no one will take that bond seriously. So they, he had to do it this way. So, you know, in order to kind of bridge the world of, again, nothing bad against crypto, but the virtual world of crypto versus on-chain finance or real world assets, real securities, real equities, there's going to have to be, you know, some level of, of bridging where, you know, oracles and other things and everything else comes as best as possible into play. I, I'm still just hung up on they figured out a way to, to monetize their volcanoes. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they, they sure did. <laughs> you know, besides the tourism element, right? Okay, well, as we're wrapping up here, let me just ask you, I guess, your thoughts for the future. So one big thing is we're recording is recently the Bitcoin ETFs got approved. Right. Just, you know, whether that or just more broadly, what do you see coming either U.S. specifically or globally? I guess one thing I, I'm asking a lot of guests from your uh, area of, you know, specialization, are the regulators around the world, are, you know, are they on board and saying, yes, this is the wave of the future. And so long as the digitization happens along these ways, I guess we're okay with that versus, you know, trying to stop it and saying, oh, wow, we, you know, we don't like this. You know, I, I think, I don't think anyone is against this tokenization trend other than some people may prefer the, again, the permissionless, I would like to anonymously be able to yeah. own stocks of things. That's just a world that cannot exist with the world's regulations everywhere. But everybody else says, hey, this is cool. This is better. I want things more efficiently. I want things faster. I want to be able to collateralize more stuff. Uh, I want to be able to pay for stuff with my stocks. I want to be able to self-custody them. All these features are both very, very interesting to the professionals on Wall Street and very interesting to a lot of people in the world of crypto. And it should be very interesting to a lot of individuals. And we're, we're already going to start seeing that. Um, so uh, there's a platform recently called Reserve that launched a partnership with T0. And it's a company focused on hotels to tokenize hotels in order to encourage their guests to buy stock in their hotel. And if they do, they get a discount at that stay or they get free stays or benefits and experiences. So the idea of merging customers and shareholders is going to come. I love to use the example of AMC popcorn. Most people don't realize that if you're an AMC stockholder, you actually have a, free, a right to free popcorn. You get a free bag of popcorn. And how do they do this? You go online, you go to their website, and, and you say, hey, I want to redeem my free bag of popcorn. And how do they prove that you own that stock? Well, you mark a checkbox that says, hey... I solemnly swear that I own a share of AMC stock. And they don't care whether they do or not because at the end of the day, it's a marketing stunt. Mm -hmm. But the point that I'm trying to bring up is with a blockchain, they actually could. You actually could show up and say, hey, here's my AMC stock tokens. Mm -hmm. Give me my redemption, please. And they could actually efficiently execute a marketing program. But so we're going to see this tokenization trend in finance, in commerce, everywhere, in all use cases. And what Larry Fink and what Jamie Dimon and even Jeremy Allaire, the CEO of Circle, just came out and said the same thing. We're at a turning point where this was a signal to the market that this technology is here. There's a use case, uh, an e Ethereum ETF is being talked about, right? So that kind of gives validity to, again, the smart contracts angle that this is a turning point. This is finally we're here. People accept this technology, not for what crypto is, but what for tokenization is. Mm -hmm. uh, and that it's going to make capital markets way better, finance way better. Well, I mean, people who listen to this podcast, perhaps hoping for stock tips or whatever, I just think now they know how to get a free bag of popcorns. So that right there <laughs> justifies listening. Because you want better. Yeah. But folks, remember, it's, you don't lie, right? It's selling your soul for a free bag of popcorn. It's not worth it in the long run. Go get that AMC <laughs> stock if you want the popcorn. Not giving financial advice. I'm just giving a conditional uh, statement. Popcorn advice. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. This is Bob Murphy. Thanks for listening to this clip from the InFi podcast. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, please consider subscribing and share this video with others. We've got new episodes dropping every Friday with more insightful discussions. Stay tuned.